Your freckles are so cute. Go ahead, Sierra. Are you about to drink you introduce, that? You introduce. Wait, what's what? What flavor is that? Passion fruit guava. Oh, so she's just thinking about herself class. now. Oh. <laughs> That's what happens when you slide in on the side of the group chat. Ask the Lord help me. Go ahead, see. <laughs> Get us going. We're starting, right? Joey, are we recording? Okay. <laughs> Here we are. All of us in one room. Guys, welcome back to Codependence. I can't even believe we're all sitting here on the couch and we're not in the bed. In the bed. Yeah. Honestly, it feels weird to be upright. The bed sore girls? I know. I need to like. We could laugh. We could. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, my here. shoes are off. I'm comfortable for sure. Oh, I would get on. comfy. Yeah, get yourself a little comfortable. Yeah, take your shoes off. Yeah. Take yourself at home. This is our home. Yeah, drip that <laughs> oh, place. Yeah, in. honey. I don't know why. I don't know why this is so like, weird a little bit. I, I feel like we, get so we, okay. we do, do this know, all the time. Do you want to know why I think it's weird? Because because <laughs> I'm the only one without a podcast. I <laughs> one, for sure. But two, like when we hang out, we don't. It's like so organic. Like we never post, I feel like, when we're together on social media. No. So this is like the first time I feel like we're doing something that's not like bravo press yeah this is our most on the record would... thing that i feel like we've done in terms of yeah hanging out besides hanging out on tv and when we hang out we don't have like topics to discuss well no, we, we don't. do but no, <laughs> no, no, no we, girl there's yeah. more importantly amanda yeah. can't leave in the middle and say she's coming back and never come yeah. back yeah <laughs> Yeah. Can we just talk about how Amanda loves to ditch us at Oh, night? my God. She loves to pull it. I'll be right back. Then we find her passed out somewhere. Okay, but there's a reason. What, girl? Uh, One night, you said you would sleep with us. Oh, my God. And, and I was too to that. too high. And then I'm like, <laughs> I have to go. Yeah. I just have to go. I'm like, everyone knows I'm high. I have to go. <laughs> I think I people to to don't bed. realize, like, I feel like everyone's always like, oh, my God, the girls are so lazy. All they do is lay in the bed. But I don't think that Summer House shows a good example of like the activities that happen whilst in the bed, in the bed. Mm -hmm. yeah yes the meals like, <laughs> the meals the meals the crosswords the crosswords the conversation i cannot believe not a single second of crossword puzzles <laughs> right because <laughs> that brought everyone <laughs> together at one Can point I we had every single person <laughs> in the house contribute to a crossword no, exactly and it started when you brought the people magazine one and then i went to another little kitty store in, in montauk grabbed another crossword yeah. book and then maya ordered the people magazine sure crosswords did. still have it like it was our actual hobby besides like putting the bed together eating do it getting ready and whatnot together. it's also but like when people are having conversations elsewhere in the house you're not gonna like sit right next to them and listen like right well we actually the... do do that <laughs> mm, yeah even if it's behind a wall that's a pride no i love eavesdropping but... for sure but <laughs> for the I most get what part you're saying. yeah we're like we have to have like a safe space it's too. our bed yeah. i feel like for the sake of our mental health we have to be it's also nice to have a space where you trust everyone here's the other thing you can let i your feel guard like a down. lot of people get energy from other people and we, we are not like that <laughs> no like rain people's rain, cup my yeah. people's cup runneth over yeah empty we're like, empty um, we're dry like it's exhausting <laughs> my the most spot on thing I've yeah. Heard. yeah my therapist actually refers to it as um energy vampires mm -hmm. and they literally suck, suck the energy them, from yeah. you yeah and then you have to retreat to like your own quarters to like fill it back up again yeah but battery for me like kyle battery gets charged being out and totally and things, yeah. yeah mine drain so like i have to go home at the end of the night kyle is like my battery is fully charged that's why he's like craig out. insane through a memorial day weekend party i left in the middle of it as you should can <laughs> i i was there can i tell you everyone's like where's the page i was like why are you guys asking me where page is <laughs> she's in the she's fucking in bed. bed i she's had got um, i go into the room Girl, she is passed she, out. At I first, she was sleeping. At first, it started. I was like, "Hey, let's just like sit in silence for a second. We're both in the bed." Then we were, we're like scrolling, and then I just see her <laughs> like fall I over. I was hit, like, "Okay, she's out." You had a wall. I had hit my socializing limit. I guess like that. I. I feel like as I get older, I'm so good at setting boundaries of like things like, okay, I'm not doing that. Or yes, I'm doing that. Or I'm canceling that to do something else. Yeah. And when it comes to like in social settings, once I hit a moment where I'm like, I need to be alone, 
I I have literally four minutes yeah. <laughs> to get alone or I'll lose my mind. A lot of the times you've already called the Uber. It's for sure. It's out. It's, it's yeah. outside. It's yeah. waiting. I was just having this conversation with Maya and like getting older and just I told my mom I'm in my bitch era. Yeah. Where I'm getting to the point where I don't give a fuck anymore. I'm tired of playing nice. I'm saying what I think now. Yeah. I'm trying to. It's like one of those things that's hard for me, but trying to say what I think. In the Le- moment. In the moment, leaving when I want to leave, not going to shit when I don't want to go. Just like not entertaining. No is stuff. a complete sentence. No oh. is a complete No is a complete Wait, Wait, sentence. who said that, that again? The Olsen, the Olsen twins. twins. Yeah. 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 Oh, they always really? knew what was up. Yeah. yeah. I love saying You've no. not seen that. No. No is a complete sentence. I think their dad always it was a third well, dad. Elizabeth Olsen was the one that said like yeah. my sisters always told me no is a complete sentence. Yeah. And I like that, especially for girls. Because you don't need to explain yourself. No, 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 I, no. Know. I struggle with it. <laughs> hey, you want to come over? <laughs> no, 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 period. <laughs> no, and I we feel did. like we, when we cancel on each other, I we never don't get mad. I we don't get mad. Do I cancel? I think I just don't even commit. You don't respond. We, we, don't, we <laughs> know better with you, though. Wait, guys, for this, when Sierra sent us all the group text, uh, she also. DM'd me on Instagram and on TikTok telling me to check my text message. I did. I did. did. All within a minute of each other. Well, when we were were originally trying to figure out the day, I was trying to figure out your schedule and what you, I was like, Amanda's not going to be able to do it Thursday. She's stressed. She is planning a a dinner. We're anticipating. So thoughtful. But I made a point. I was like, okay, I sent the original text message. I have to, I have to hit Amanda's TikTok Instagram. I know that bitch is on TikTok. I was in a meeting, believe it or not. No, I believe that. I believe that. But I think that in order to really catch your attention, we got to get up on all channels. all, All channels. One of my favorite things about our friendship is... Like, we can be in, like, a normal group chat with each other, but then it, there's just such a different energy when we talk in our group chat with Kyle. And I feel like I've gotten the closest <laughs> to Kyle in the past year that I ever have in my life. I feel like he, like, hypes us up. Do you know that we yeah. talk on the phone? You mean and Kyle? Kyle? <laughs> I actually would be be comfortable with that, he, too. But does Kyle big... let you get a word in? Because, like, I remember when the season first started, no. Kyle would call me about things, and I was like, I'm, I would just put it right on mute and do whatever else I was doing. He, he called, just talks. He called me not too long ago, and he's telling us telling me a story of things that happened. I went to interject to agree with him, like to be like, yeah, no, I totally get that. And, he, and it threw his whole train of thought off when I said, oh, yeah, no, I agree. He said, wait, what? And I said, no, I'm just agreeing with you. And he said to me, can you just let me get this out? <laughs> you can imagine, no, you can agree. imagine being his wife. Our conversation. You can talk. And I said, no. Oh, my God. I'm it's, so sorry. Yes, I get apologize. it. <laughs> get I it apologize. out. And I just think that is like the best thing ever. Yeah. The one thing that freaked me out when we started dating is how much he called me. Like I was yeah. strictly like text only. But you don't then. even it was, text. Like, early 20s. This was like back when I, I don't know. She's I didn't changed. have so much anxiety and depression. People change. Good um, segue. We're going to go yeah. there too. <laughs> I I like that he's also a fan of a voice note. Always. Always leaves a voice note. Always would call me and I'd be like, forward to my voicemail. I'm not going to pick up. Like, is someone on fire? Yeah. 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 But no, he's a big fan of of a phone call and now I appreciate it. I do too. Because it it does get the job done. Yeah. I feel like our last summer, Kyle, I was, Kyle really moved into the brother era of just. I mean, the shit that he would come into our room with. Yeah. The like, late night Kyle is like, just like and, something And people so thinking, I know they brought it up how I'm <laughs> Kyle's hall pass. I'm like, you just don't understand how I would never. Yeah. You just, I, think- I just forgot a moment. Here's the other thing. Why people, I don't think people understand like how close we really are. Do you remember when Kyle was standing in our bedroom <laughs> and Cassidy was in the bathroom? Yeah, when his dick came out. And he, yes. <laughs> he's like stripping for us. Okay, we're Ass just, out. we're going to set the scene. It's me. It's the four of us laying in bed. Kyle walks into our bedroom with a towel with on. With a towel on. He's like dancing he's got for us. Speaker. He's got his speaker. Like, he's putting like something sexy. It's like, yes. it's like when you're little and like there's all the adults mm-hmm. and you come and you're like, I'm going to put on a show. Yeah. And the adults are like, okay, like we'll watch. That is what <laughs> happened. 
And then Kyle heard a noise in the bathroom, and then a girl walked out of our as bathroom. He's like, Do you has remember when he said, yeah, has a like, back to us? Yeah. As if we were all in a room, as if he wasn't in a room it was of like, women. He was like, a real girl is here? As if, yeah, as <laughs> if we, we don't, don't count. Count. We're not, we, don't we don't count at all. He was like, why didn't you guys tell me there was a girl in here? We were like, why didn't Kyle, you tell us you were going to leave your dick out? Yeah, why <laughs> are you naked, bare naked under this towel, gyrating in front of us? Like, like we get it. And we were, some performance. Yeah. None of us were phased by it. None of us we were phased. still no. on our phone like, yeah, yeah Kyle, it's, you're so good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, wasting my damn time. We honestly, we didn't even realize how weird it was until Cassidy came out. Until, and we were all just like, the fact that we were sitting here just watching Kyle put no, on No, literally until a real girl came out. Yeah. We were like, no, this, this is a weird thing. <laughs> Inappropriate. To be walking into like, you know, we get it. It's awkward. Oh it's God. weird. Lucky Cassidy. To segue into why we're always in the bed. Yeah. I feel like people don't even understand when, yeah, we're filming a show, but also to pick up on like you saying, we get so insanely drained from being in front of the camera, also talking to people. People also don't understand. I feel like I filmed a lot about like my mental health this summer that never kind of got played which is totally fine but like going on antidepressants this summer and trying to like figure out my balance on them yeah i'm like guys i'm also <clears throat> depressed that's why i'm in the bed i'm so like, sorry i just had the flashback to when you came to my house at like 10 p.m because you I, need yeah. drugs like and I, was I was like, like your prescription hadn't come yet and yeah, i was my like well I'm here to help you. Yeah. 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 my well butrin had not come i was like maya i know you have a stash Always. Like, I need to borrow five pills <laughs> to get me through the week. I had to send you a picture to make sure they're the right ones. <laughs> yeah, we're comparing <laughs> like drug. drug exchange. I was like, look, I'm not well. And if I don't get this in right now, like, I'm not going to be able to find my balance. So, I mean, I feel like, like, they make fun of us for being in the bed, but they don't even realize. Well, we also feel with, like, the it is. biggest personalities. Like, think about what it takes. Everyone has to have something to say. Do yeah. you be around that 24-7? First off, like... I don't want to be around people 24-7 yeah. ever. I don't, even if it's you guys, I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm. I don't, no, I don't want that. I also <laughs> feel like anytime I'm going somewhere or doing something, the same thought is always in my head. Like, okay, how can I get home? Like, how yeah, like I, how far is how can I bed? leave What's where I am and be, yeah. and be home? Yeah. for everything so even like if we are in the hamptons or something i'm still always thinking okay how can i get back home and get to the bed and be yeah. by myself so if i like see an opportunity to be alone i'm gonna, I'm gonna take, take it, it. I'm gonna take for sure. and i'm never going to apologize i'm always trying to be more horizontal than i currently am yeah mm -hmm. and i feel mm -hmm. like amanda you went through that it's so weird kyle can we, okay, people who don't understand anxiety and depression and can't mm -hmm. relate. I have a friend like that and her husband just, he's like, yeah, if you're stressed, go to the gym. Oh, I'm yeah. like, no, no, no. That's the nightmare I'm living in. Yeah, I'm like. Is that Kyle? I'm like, says, if you like, don't. Go to the gym and it, you'll feel better. And I'm like, you no, I've done that in the beginning when I f first started having these like anxiety symptoms and depression symptoms. I went to the gym. After the gym, I had mm -hmm. a full on panic attack. Mm -hmm. And my therapist was like, yeah, some people aren't always meant to go to the gym because it increases your cortisol and then you'll completely freak out. I was like, OK, nice. Like, that's actually not helpful for me. And Kyle was like, I just don't understand. And I'm like, what a blessing it is for you to not understand. Yeah. To, to you have know? like a <clears throat> balance of chemicals in your brain would just be like so wonderful. Couldn't yeah. Be I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> like the fact that he thinks that the solution is always to drink water. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like always. Like I'll complain about anything and he'll come over with like yeah. a glass of water. Like, Here, drink <laughs> right, some right. Water. That's honestly I'm like, yo, I'm amazing. on my period. I don't need water. water. Yeah. No. Even ever since getting my period back, my like symptoms have been different so i get really tired like i need yeah, almost fatigue. like 12 to 14 hours of sleep like for two days i just get so exhausted it's different so even yesterday morning i like couldn't wake up i was just so drained even though i went yeah. to bed at like nine o'clock and kyle's like what's wrong with you like i'm tired of being your alarm clock i'm like i, I can't explain to you what i'm right. going through and he's yeah. like you need to like get to the gym and like drink more water <laughs> I'm like, if you Wouldn't just for one you more day, new. for one day, if you had your period for just one yeah. day, I would love to know how you feel. 
They, if and he men had his could not for handle one it. day, he can't. He is the lowest pain threshold. I no, feel like. yeah. uh, we need to buy those things. Yes. Oh, the cramping Thank you for reading my mind. Yes. yes. For the birthing. Yes. yes. Wait, what are you? Oh, the that, simulator. Like can, yeah, yeah, the simulator that if you can put on. If we don't do that guys. this summer, I'm going to. No, we, we have, have to. We have to make that I will order it right. It's on Amazon. Need to know. Yeah. Is it? Is it? I don't know, but I'll find it. I feel like we need it. a professional to come in and like they and, get the full right, like, this is what Aren't there levels to yeah, it? Cause, like, yeah, because like period cramping, then actual childbirth. Like for sure, we should make them do that. You seriously just, it, you're drained on top of like your your balance. You're drained on top of your drained. chemicals, and then we I get. Speak. I get it. We, yeah, we're, we're drained as it is, right? And then we get more drained from our periods, yeah. right? So it's like a double whammy. I like just recently went off my birth control, and I think it's the best decision I've ever made. Obviously, yeah. consult your doctor. I didn't, but um, <laughs> did you not? I didn't. I did. Why did you choose to do that? Because I felt like when I started birth control, I was like, oh, this is amazing. I'm one of the lucky people that have no side effects from it. Like, this just goes with my body. This and how is amazing. long ago did you start? This was like two and a half years ago. Okay. And then I was... Did you stay on the same birth control that you originally went on? Yes. Wow. And then I was like reflecting back on like the past two years of my life. And I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm different in certain situations. Like mentally, <laughs> the way I look at situations right, yeah. feels different from a couple of years ago. So I went off of it and I did like I feel completely different because I feel like my side effects were so slow that I didn't notice like, them. Yeah. So now being off of it for like two months. I feel completely different. That quickly? Like my brain feels way. different. Yeah. Yeah. I went on. Like do you have clarity? Like what is it? Such a different like mental clarity. I don't care about things that I would get like hyper fixated on. Okay. Um, like I just don't think of them. And I feel like naturally, this sounds like so corny, but like my thoughts are happier. No, that's exactly no. the same thing happened to me. So I was on Nuvering. I just thought it was like part of who I was, right? I yeah. was on like in high school. So you don't, you know, I'm still growing up and going to college. I'm yeah. figuring myself out. I don't realize how birth control is affecting me. When I went off, I was like, I, wow, I'm chill. Yeah. I'm like, so I don't chill. care about yeah. anything that I cared yeah. about before. Like, this doesn't make me upset. Right. I'm not going to cry about this. Yeah. I'm not emotional. You do whatever you want. Like, this isn't bothering me I'm not me frustrated. I'm, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm just, I was, like, happier and just, like, going through life being, like, who who the hell cares? Yeah. Wow, Were both of your nice. birth controls hormonal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I now I'm like I don't know if you've seen my wheels turning. I'm like, oh my god, do I need to take my IUD out? Like, wait, just, you? Oh yeah, you do have an IUD. I think you should take it out. Like, yeah. listen, I'm already on this like new path. Like, I'm off all my pills because I'm starting new. Well, I just started new. <laughs> You're pills. Rebalancing your. Like, I don't know if my main issue was ever really like anxiety and depression, and that's now like what we're trying to figure out. Mm. Yeah. On top of everything else that I have going on health wise. Right. <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever like sat in a therapy session and like said a bunch of things about yourself and then you're like but i don't know if i have anxiety or depression but like everyone's listening like, to yourself everyone's talk, like you're yeah. there this is like no yeah for sure for, you yeah. have are it are we all depressed in this room right <laughs> no, now no for sure yeah, and yeah, i know 100%. mine's natural okay. because i'm not on birth control and i'm no longer on my antidepressants so mine's yeah but you are real. doing so well i'm like, doing so well like i feel like i've seen such a difference okay yeah. Okay. So I started ke doing ketamine therapy. Yeah. In okay. So I went on this amazing trip to Costa Rica, which I've talked about before. I went to go change my life over the new year. That's I really did go on a solo trip by myself to yeah. Costa Rica to go and find myself. I went to like a whole yoga retreat, and and this was like and there you're I stopped, literally a shaman. I'm. Do you yeah. remember yeah. how she was talking when she I came back? Never. Yeah. The most motivated person I've ever met. <laughs> in my fucking life to I the point where i was like, like oh my god should i get out of bed and i was like no. <laughs> no. you did go you were like I should like, i go to costa rica i no, was like you, you should were, you were motivated like yeah. i felt like you were a motivational speaker when yeah. you got back and when i came back but then in that feb that february i hit another wall and it was just like doomsday and i'm already t kind of like a doomsday type of person i think not n naturally. like a catastrophic i just well maya would describe it as she was like, you just feel like you're not good enough for anything. Like, yeah. Nobody wants you. You're not worthy of anything. And I remember one dinner we went to and you kind 
we were at dinner with Casey. I'm telling him all these things. And you were like, okay. you stopped me. You were kind of drunk. You were pissing me off. But you stopped me. You were like, I am not going to let you sit here and talk as if no one's interested in you or no one likes you or you're just not worthy of all this stuff. You were like, it's so fucking annoying. And I just kind of was like, OK, I was like, all right. I was Wait, so, so that was a good dumbfounded by the way yeah. you t were speaking to me, one. But you were right. You were so right. And that's kind of like how I was. But I hit that wall. And then from there, I was like, OK, I'm I found well, I'd heard about ketamine therapy mm -hmm. and I was so interested in trying it because people say you kind of hit a wall with talk therapy sometimes. Yeah. And the brain scars in a way where, <clears throat> you know, logically you need to move on from something, but it's hard. You just can't. Yeah. And so you do need to find a way to create different neuropaths pathways and i'm like so into this alternative medicine bullshit like yeah. the psilocybin the haven't done an ayahuasca or the psilocybin stuff but ketamine. i always get confused are we western medicine or eastern we're western. we are western western yeah. you should that do that should be like me. your new path into <laughs> like a new career path for you I, like you I, could you medicine? could do like the guiding the trips and all of that for this stuff perhaps I feel like you You're found so much I have I know I have to finish all that. of my ketamine therapies but my journeys but who's to say because I'm on I've only done three treatments so far but you do you get seven of them there's and then you're supposed to do six because the seventh one is like a tune-up but since I've started doing them wait I have so many questions yeah as you're getting ketamine put in your body are mm -hmm. you also talking to like a therapist at the same time so there's an integrative coach so how it works is I literally go in in the morning my is like my emergency contact I will be like look I'm going in it's 9 a.m you know I put my turn my phone off you go into it's like a quiet room kind of like this and you have an integrative ther therapy coach who will kind of just have you set the intention for okay. this trip for this journey and and with that intention that's supposed to guide you and like my first one the craziest thing that she said to me was like as I'm going into as I'm going into this journey because it's an IV an hour-long okay. IV infusion um Does that mean do you feel sorry, sorry. Go. no go ahead Does I that mean you're like getting it consistently for an hour, for an hour. in your system yeah. Low drip. Do you start to drip. feel high yeah you start to feel like okay. you can start to see, feel yourself drifting away okay and so she'll guide you and you do a breathing exercise and she goes okay you're in an auditorium you're sitting there in the audience on stage there's six different six or seven different versions of yourself throughout your lifetime to now who are you most attracted to oh my yeah. gosh yeah. who are you most drawn to and um and immediately I knew which version of myself I was most drawn to. And it was like my six, seven year old self. And I down to like the outfit that she was wearing. Yeah. And then she was like, OK, go where she takes you. And ketamine's very fast. You don't know if you're you also lose feeling in your extremities. So you don't know if your feet are on the ground, on the ceiling. Oh, no. But you're laying down. But uh, you're in a zero gravity chair. OK. Yeah. And you just go where she takes you. And sometimes you see like kaleidoscope colors. I've had different journeys where I've seen um, like different family members and stuff, like especially like my mom's mom. Like I felt like I had kind of like a reconciliation with her because she died when I was so young. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just different people in my family. Sometimes you do relive like very vivid memories that you've had that have been traumatic. Yeah. And you kind of can see it from like the outside perspective. So I've been in situations where like I've seen family dynamics play out in a different way. But then I've also seen kaleidoscope colors. I feel like I've seen f myself in future situations. You can't like put an exact time on it but you can see yourself in future situations where it's kind of like a what, deja vu what's maybe. What's the movie with Scrooge where it's like Christmas, the ghost of Christmas. Yeah, Christmas yeah. Carol. Yeah. As in future. Do yeah. you feel like there's any, like, there's a traumatic. Like living. <laughs> I, yeah, kind of. Do you feel like there's a traumatic experience that happened to you in your childhood that you kind of saw while you were doing this ketamine therapy and now you're over it? Like, you worked mm, through it. Not yet. I think I'm, I think as you do each journey, I'm actively working through it and, and also like trying to give myself grace. So, you get obviously at the end you're so i'm very emotional after the yeah. end they say don't call anyone for 48 hours you oh know, wow don't make any I like rash that. decisions <laughs> right that's right literally the only thing amanda would need for her <laughs> Bye, yeah. Yeah. right up yeah. sorry i can't talk like, just don't speak to anyone oh, but I um that. yeah so i feel like maybe i understand my parents a little bit more mm. you know 
And a lot of my trauma is my parents' divorce. Yeah. And my relationship with my dad. So I feel like I kind of get it a little bit more. Do I understand it fully? No, I don't think I ever will. And I know that part of that reconciliation will come when I have kids. Yeah. But I think in terms of maybe just trying to understand the mindset and who they are. Yeah. And also taking into account their childhood and how they grew up. Yep. And how my grandparents were towards them versus how they were towards me. That's been a really big thing that I've known that I've really tried to understand and break down because I like think I idolized my grandparents in a way because yeah. they were such a huge part of my childhood right. and a huge part of my life. And as they've, you know, gone on and passed away, it's left me with some type of unresolve. So yeah, just trying to like dig deep. And yeah actually figure out my issues and my traumas aside from just like medicating right which is one of the reasons why I went off my antidepressants at the beginning of the year because I just was getting to the point where I was like I'm never gonna fucking solve this I did feel like it was doomsday like <clears throat> so you feel like this works better for you than like regular SSRIs yeah totally I think so I mean it does create different neuro pathway pathways they use this treatment a lot for like um isn't it commonly used for like ptsd ptsd yeah. ocd yeah. addiction there it's used as like an addiction therapy and oh wow it fucking works i think it fucking works and i'm only three sessions in so it's crazy to think like i feel like a lot of things that i like internally try and work on not that like i'm trying to have kids anytime soon or like be anyone's mom but i do feel like certain things that i don't like about either like about myself or like things I think I could be better or like want to change. Yeah. I think like how, if I don't change this, how will this impact me as a mom? Yeah. And like, I don't want to be this type of mom. Like, do you ever think, cause we're on reality TV, like how, what we're doing right now is going to impact. Oh For yeah. Sure. That's like half the reason I don't want to change my last name because I need like every article that's written about me to be Amanda Petrola. <laughs> oh, and then you have kids. when my kids come out, I'm like Amanda Cook cook. to yeah. them. You're like, I and they like try to Google their mom. And, that's so yeah. smart. One of the yeah. most interesting things I saw, um, I'm sure it was a video on TikTok or maybe I read it. Who knows? Who knows? You saw it on Who TikTok. Knows? <laughs> I, you it read was, it in the New York Times. Sunday. Yeah. It was someone talking about how it's like when we become parents, like we don't know what we're doing. Like we just become, we just yeah. have kids and we have to figure it out. Right. And that's how our parents yeah. went through it. And that's even how younger. Their and even younger. They even didn't younger. know what they were yeah. doing either. And we yeah. look at our parents and we idolize them and think yeah. that like they were born as parents yeah. and they weren't. They're just yeah. figuring out as they go along. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to have to do too. And that's terrifying. And that's right? Important. Like we literally are going to have a, a, like have to raise a human being having no idea really like what we're doing. But if you, Okay, imagine growing up and the like moment you realize your mom was on a television show. Would you not go back and watch all of it? Like if I knew that there were episodes yeah. out somewhere on the internet of, of my mom, mom being be 25, I would yeah. be watching everything. I hope the internet dies. <laughs> yeah it's gonna it's like the cloud, the cloud just poof yeah it's gone. and that sometimes like cripples me oh yeah it, it makes it i but what hate part the exactly of that. like what what would what are you most nervous about i guess like what gives you like the most angst the nudity what? the sex the drinking and the relationship with my now husband oh <laughs> yeah okay those I'll are all really <laughs> good that was a good literally list. nailed it because i don't want her to be like everyone else in america and watch something and take it at face value and then have an opinion a of about me you. and right. me have to explain to her like hey this isn't real this is true this is this, is this was really a bigger happened. conversation right like i get worried about what that conversation will be like i don't know why in my head it's a girl yeah because you're but, having a girl yeah but or, like, like have a girl. you don't want them to like hold it against you like you did this or like like what do you mean i can't do x y and yeah. z like look what you did with your life right but also you never know like what the other kids are saying what the other parents are saying so it's so it's a lot right, like your... i don't want to yeah another kid showing her something right yeah and i feel like why the reason i like 
want to work hard or whatever is so that my kids think oh my god I had, my mom is like so cool and my mom does this and my mom like yeah. can afford to send us to do this like I want like the things I make decisions on now are for future them if right. Kim Kardashian I was do just it, going to bring it into so Kim true. because have you seen that she's saying like that what Kanye's been up to is so much more detrimental to her kids in the long term than her table ever be yeah but she's like consistently shamed by him for yeah. having the tape and I that's I, so weird I just wonder like what do you guys think do you think the tape is more detrimental or Kanye's like I think that's a weird. Antics. I think that's a weird thing for him to even bring up, knowing that when you got with her, the, the tape, tape was existed. out. Right? How do you go back and now hold this over her head, make well, her the mother of your but children? But also, because that, that he's was not well. Effort. But if we like take that out of the equation, like, yeah. What is like at the end of the day, what is more detrimental? Although, like, I think the way that he's acting now. Yeah. I agree. Because to be honest, I always say this to my mom. I don't really know who she was before she has kids. I there's very little evidence if my mother even existed before she had kids. <laughs> That's because what I mean. right. we honest, think you're born as parents. Yeah. Because right. honestly, she doesn't talk about it much found out this chick lived in florida before she had kids I was yeah like, well when yeah Who knew? like there's so many different things that she did before she had kids i'm just like okay don't really know that part of you she doesn't talk about it and much you also don't even you will you've actually experienced your mom in other relationships like other than yeah your father, other than my dad like, i have never my yeah. mom was married before my dad like, wait that's so crazy and you didn't yeah. know till like how old probably like 10 ish yeah. like oh I feel wow like that's my fully and had were an understanding. you when you first found out like were you mad i was just like how, like how where did you well, find the time whose dad was previously married they didn't have kids together but it was the same sort of of like revelation where it's like yeah no, yeah, that's like, he came yeah. to that's my aunt's right. funeral and I was like, why are you here? Yeah, Your and mom's first husband. Correct. Like I've met him. I've met his parents. His parents have like she maintained a very close relationship yeah. with them until they passed. So they would come over. That's, that's like how I crazy. really remember like understanding that she was married before yeah. because like basically like pseudo grandparents were coming right. over. I wonder yeah. how many people's parents were married before like their current relationship they but they just didn't have kids so they don't feel the need to like tell, tell them children about that. it yeah I like mean, i that's... wonder how many people yeah, are like, out there do you... secretly holding but i will say it's definitely i think what kanye's doing now is so much more detrimental because the kids are here and they feel the friction between the parents and the conflicts and I'm sure that I'm sure that maybe they can read about some of it and him acting a fool. Let me tell you. I mean, and my parents didn't get along for 22. How old am I? 27. My parents, after they got divorced, did not get along until maybe all of like five years ago. Yeah. Like yeah. couldn't be in the same room. Were just nasty to each other. They couldn't get past the fact that my mom divorced my dad. And I'm like, you, my dad has no idea how much that impacted the kids more than it right. ever impacted my mom. And the kids really lived through it. So I, I always right, think like, about would it. Would you rather, like, if you could go back in your childhood, right. you'd rather, like, know your mom had a sex tape than, like, your parents not get along. Right. Like, that, I'd rather. Yeah. Well, and yeah. For, it, like, the things he has said about her. Well, that's yeah. what it seems like Kim is really trying to hold it together and, like, speak very highly, highly of yeah. her her children's father where he's dragging her right right like she's showing them nothing but like positivity and like you know love for their their father and like he's an amazing man and you know we support him and we love him while he's just dragging her through the mud yeah i mean obviously we don't know everything but i do have a lot of respect for the way she handles the situation yeah i am watching, what we see yeah. kim kardashian stan oh for Did sure you see her talking about how like the kids get in the car after carpool or yeah, whatever and, she, like, and they just want to blast their dad's Kanye. music and yeah, she's like, just like and she's left okay. yeah, yeah. She to, yeah and i feel Meanwhile, like the that's, lyrics are that's about like mom. her having an affair with drake and she's like yeah we love this she's song like, <laughs> <laughs> hey you win some but you also, lose some feel like like you win some, who lose knows some. what culture will be like by the time we have kids because now there's like only fans right so it's like sex isn't seen as such a so taboo yeah. as it was like 15 years ago so there's like obviously moms who are on only fans yeah yes. and i just there's always going to be such a double standard when it comes to sex and women like do you think well, ray j's like work? nervous about telling his kids oh my god that absolutely he has not sex tape? he looks like a hero right absolutely not <laughs> no. 
I forgot he was in like it for women. A second. I old... forgot he was in it for yeah, a second. Okay. You forgot about him. <laughs> so... Like I just feel like if a girl has sex, she'll always be called a whore. If she's a bitch, like in the office, because she's just assertive, like she'll always be called a bitch. A bitch. Yeah, yeah, I want to know what the difference between like a boss babe, a boss a bitch boss is, bitch. and like someone who's just, just like a, a boss. Bitch. Yeah. Oh, or just a bitch. <laughs> or just the boss. I could tell right? you. I feel like. <laughs> like I could go on OnlyFans and like I'm a slut, but then someone else can do, and it's like good for her. You or make you, like, that she's money. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. But she's I so if confident. you started an OnlyFans today, ripped apart. You would oh get yeah, ripped apart. But I think in terms of they did it to writing the wrong, rewriting patterns in your own familiar familial history, I'm trying to do that now. So by the time that I have kids, like hopefully I've done enough of that work where they're not too fucking judgmental. But I also think communicating with the kids from the start, you know, well, like obviously we're gonna fuck our kids up in some way. It's totally. just like there's no way, yeah, you know, like I can't to wait to see in like 30 years when they're in therapy and they're like, yeah. well, as a child, my mom, and it's yeah. like, well, that's like also, I want to know no, what, what I, I did. did, what yeah, I did, yeah, did yeah, I yeah. Do? That's another that, reason like, I don't want to have kids because I feel like I am so affected by how like childhood things, yeah, and just like how I perceive things as kids, and like I think like initially a lot of my like go to to blame is like my parents yeah which like you know i'm sure they have other things to say to that but i don't want to be that person in some you're such life. a good dog mom like i feel like i look at my dogs and i'm like they give me purpose and that's what makes me feel more comfortable and confident about bringing like a human into yeah, this bitch, world i can't wait for that, you to like be i have so much yeah. love for them and that's how you are with, with your dogs, dogs too and other people's yeah, but dogs i think i can be that way with dogs because they can't fully understand me so like when i am <laughs> they having they can't go to therapy and talk like about when i it. have my breakdowns or like when i'm angry whatever it is like they're just gonna lick my face and make yeah. sure i'm okay whereas like a kid can internalize that yeah. and that can like affect their grades or like just like how they look at the world or yeah. like what they think about women if it's, a, if it's like all types of things that i could do to fuck them up you're saying like if you had kids you would be too worried about like how you would fuck them up or like what you would do to them but don't you feel like we need more like good people in the world yeah and that's why i feel like you should have kids <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of like, awful there people. There needs to be more people. Mind. Like, like, we need to, to set help people it all and set other people straight. We need more of you. I do you think you like would be I, a very hands-on. You, were, I always say you would be the best mom, but I would. You can do, be an aunt. Yeah, I just like want you guys to have kids. But like my sister now, I guess is not thinking of having kids, which is like a hundred percent her prerogative. But yeah, like, to me, I'm now thinking like, damn, dude, does that mean like I should reconsider this because? Like, I want to continue. Like, I don't know. I feel like bringing a new generation to the family could be something very special. Yeah. Totally. Like, me, I would love I, to see my parents as grandparents. Yeah. I me can't too. wait to see my parents as grandparents. I also feel like as I get older, this never used to be a top reason that, like, I'm looking forward to kids. But it's, like, creeping up there. I'm sick of my own shit. Yeah. Like, I'm sick of being stressed about my own yeah, shit. Life. It's yeah. so mentally overwhelming. That's what I, like, my dogs have given me purpose. Like, yeah. I, like they like keep me in check like i have a routine i have a schedule with them like yeah. i have something else to focus on than like other than myself it's almost like having a kid seeing if they can make it yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. because i can't like, <laughs> mommy's too tapped out for it's me. your turn yeah. like you try and do you, it. i'm then, over it but then like having kids has there's another element to it because then you have to like deal with your kids friends parents like sierra and i just overheard this crazy oh, conversation yeah. we were at the coffee shop yeah we're all and you heard like moms talking. This like, girl this mom was crying. Okay, okay. <laughs> so they're the moms are crying. The mom was talking to who I perceived to be, you think it was her mom? Yeah, I guess. So yeah. two generations. Okay, she's like beside herself that her kid went out to dinner with her friend without like a parental supervisor and the kid was like definitely like 13 14 okay and she's like so they took the train by themselves like i cannot believe this this is like those parents are awful yeah and yeah. she's like was drafting an email to write to the parents to be basically like you are a fucking shitty parent it was the judgment with the parents and then she was judging the hell out of these kids, kids. she was judging the we friends like, she was like i don't want my kid to have a friend like that and I mean, i'm like listen, yeah. as scary as like or exciting as it is to become a parent i think it's actually absolutely terrifying, terrifying. because you cannot but control who your yeah. kid becomes friends with like who they hang well, out with what decisions um, they make in my household in my household 
troll. Yep. You could could very much roll. I, I mean, no I was, grew up the way I did. I was a I good kid, from her mother. but we still from got real into negative stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, you Sheila know, Miller chose who it. I was friends with, when, and how we were friends. And then when I, you thought you were friends with them, they would say that is not that's your friend. That's not your friend. That's not your friend. Mm. And if sh that didn't work okay well no phone you can't go anywhere no phone i'm I, gonna be honest i feel like my mom still controls who i'm friends with i can see that <laughs> <laughs> it's totally. still like that is my mom needs a solid 30 seconds with someone and then it is your mother and then i'll know if i should continue being friends with them your mom is so good at reading people but you're that same way to too. this day your not mom wrong. is she she's from the lord because she really has a gift yeah and she is, she is so good at reading anyone someone. that i've ever like told my mom about who like i'm not friends with anymore or whatever she's always been right with like, like they're not your real for, friend like, the fbi she or like she the does. CIA. She, she does. literally she, works she literally just like you tell her a name and she goes into she's like her it. office does yeah. a background check and is like mm -mm, no <laughs> next no right. she might not be on their payroll but i remember being afraid <laughs> to meet your mom and the one thing she said to me like when we were leaving is you were raised right and i was like <laughs> That is the yeah, that highest is compliment. I knew it meant something from her. Like it wasn't, I was just like, okay, yeah. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. No, I feel like I've now curated a circle of girls and because also like being, women. yeah, being, yeah, women <laughs> being like, in your thirties, your friend group is so like, I feel like I have a friend for every like time in my life and everything, you know, like you don't yeah. have the same group right. of girls mm -hmm. as you get older. Um, Except you have a lot of like good childhood friends, yeah. That like have stayed. You guys have stayed in a good. Yeah, fortunately close for me, they've stayed like really close and in close proximity. So I can I just go like in and out. Yeah, because I'm yeah, in the city. You always lived home. here, pretty much. Yeah, I grew up in New Jersey, and then I moved to New York, and a lot of them stayed in New Jersey. Okay, that's and, like it's easier. hard to yeah. make friends. Yeah, girl. as an adult. As an adult, when you Woman. move to a new city. And also, like, we're not in the phase of where we go out every weekend anymore. Yeah, like, we're I don't in the another... phase of, like, we're all pen pals. Right. <laughs> yeah. We are, like, are so it's you like okay? Finding You're good? friends that Great. are okay with being pen pals. Well, it's just like a low-maintenance friendship. Like, yeah. we've got our own shit going on. No, you better stop because I've been real good lately, okay? Like, if I have to be worried <laughs> like, that you're going to get mad if I cancel on you, I can't, we can't I have can't a friendship. Handle that stress. I can't, I can't be friends with people who are constantly like, you don't do this you don't for me, reach you don't out do that to me. for me, you don't do this, yeah. you don't do that, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, well, you also, I'm not upset about it and you haven't done those things either. So yeah. No, like, the phone works both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a low sure maintenance does. type of thing. Yeah. Mine only works one way. I'm, that's okay. why we're compatible. I can't talk. Like, I'm just as bad as you. Mine that's why is, we're compatible. Mine only receives calls. But I will say, whenever <laughs> Paige's name is on my phone, I get nervous. There's something about when you text me. Oh, my God. I don't really? Have I not told you this before? No. I always think something bad is happening. Like, I don't like know. Like, I'm giving you a heads up. Yeah. Like, I... I was dying at myself the other day because the way that I you texted me about XO Kitty yeah. and I what was, show? it's a Netflix show. <laughs> oh, I was, like, what I was, is I was so afraid. I saw your name and I was like, oh my god, what the oh, fuck? Bad what is happening. it? What is it? What is it? And like my heart started racing, and then you were like, you gotta watch XO Have Kitty. Have I literally ever one Never. time texted you nope. and told you something bad? Nope. No. <laughs> I, so that nope. you're projecting? I'm more to likely no, 100%. to respond to a solo text than a group text because if it's a group text. I assume that it's not directed towards me and I can catch up like when I have the time to like process or like read it all. But if it's a one on one text, I feel a little more pressure to be like, yeah, all right, gotta respond. See, I'm the yeah. same way. Like in no the, one else in the group in. chat with Kyle, I'm like, A, they have so much more history. They know much more than I do. I'm just going to let it play out. And also, I'm just Kyle happy to be talk here. to himself. Kyle right. fully talks to Well, yeah. sometimes I think he's texting you and Kyle himself. talk to yourselves. And I'm like, aren't they in the same room? Right. No, we're never in the <laughs> same no, room. No, it is funny when you two talk back and forth to each other in the group chat. <laughs> because I'm like, they're probably sitting next to each other, texting. Or like, he's, in the, like he's, reading it out. he's yes. on the couch. Reading it out. You think it's we never. talk to each other? <laughs> no. Maybe if he's not across the hall. No. Also, it's funny, like, obviously, because we're all on reality TV, which is just like such a weird space thing in general. Like, yeah. who would have ever thought? Um, but how, like, the universe brings people into your lives. Like, we would have never met. Met. Yeah, no, true. No, because I'd and be on the even couch. if we did meet, we're not the type of girls that like if we had met at a bar that we, we're getting each other's numbers. No, and 
and reaching we out the next never day. Spoken we would have never I would have looked back and been like, that was a cool girl. Yeah, that was a cool girl I met. Right, but you weren't gonna but I would never hit you up again. I would never be like, I might have like compliments and been like, Oh my god, I love your shoes. Like where are they from? And then that would have been it. And And I would have been like, Oh my god, nobody wants to talk to me. I'm just gonna go back to Because that's because we're all like in our own heads. We're just weirdos. Did we ever have any bad impressions of one another? Actually, you know what? Ooh, let's talk <laughs> about it. And Paige was like, I know this one's for me. Yeah. I don't. Paige, I never not, f- I never didn't fuck with you. Mm-hmm. But my first season, I was like, I don't know about this girl. Really? She's just, she keeps to herself. Yeah. She's not super outwardly like, I let's be buddy, buddy. Wholeheartedly but that was about a weird that. summer. That was a weird Sierra summer. summer. We were quarantined. was a weird summer. Yeah. And you were also going a- through a lot with yeah. like your ex, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, mentally. Like, it wasn't even, you didn't even realize it. I think you no. were just kind of, like, unhappy. And I think there were some unhappy. other things, too. And yeah. You I was were very just unhappy that summer. Not super vocal about it. Yeah. So you were just, like, being yourself, but there was a lot of shit holding you back. I have realized that I show zero emotion on my yeah. face. Like. But I think it's also a good survival tactic. I'm in survival mode. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> she Remember paid? when we were, like, we're in fight or fight. Paige came and into we're always in fighter yeah, yeah. my <laughs> bed with Kyle and she like just cried. She just like yeah. needed she yeah. was just like sad and we were like, What are you doing? But also <laughs> people you... don't take into account like what type of summer we're, we're having. Like, what people is don't going take on? Into account the craziest what summer t- ever. What type because... of summer we're having? Because I had a cor- like we had the quarantine summer. We're living in this house for seven weeks. I don't think people realized too during that quarantine summer that we had shut down. Yeah, for two weeks. That we were I just got in the house. It was a false it was a false positive which is such a like what you guys were still stuck in the house it was positive they didn't want it to spread Uh, okay like continue to yeah we could go in the kitchen and we could like order food but our stove didn't work so we ordered every meal yeah and it was no we were literally in survival mode because we were also in the hamptons it's not like you have a plethora of things to order from. we weren't allowed to leave the house yeah my boyfriend at the time would like drop food off because i'd be like i'm starving emaciated no it was i'm withering are. I can't believe like good I, yeah you it was you need to give yourself some more credit let me yell at you again oh, yeah. because and you yeah. survived that everyone as your first that gives season. you a hard Thanks. time and it's like oh wow Sierra is so much more fun now it's like that first season was a very difficult one to come into as yeah. a new cast member yeah like it was weird the whole yeah. thing was weird it was nuts and the fact that I turned around you were and did stuck it again with us not. yeah in a new state right oh my without God. any of your friends yeah for like, f- and I really did gravitate. You weren't even a New Yorker then, yeah. No, like, oh right. my God, no, girl, I was from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, and then I really did hit it off with Hannah. Yeah, and I loved her immediately. And then she's like, oh, cool. like then I hit it off with with you. You were like a sl- Paige was a, slow, was a burn, slow burn, but I always, but it was our car ride to Vermont. Yeah, when I what when it. I heard Paige's playlist, and I was like, oh okay. And then <laughs> she wanted to take a nap in the car, and I was like. <laughs> I was like, thank God, because I cannot be in this it place anymore. It was the anymore. nap. It was the nap sure. in the car, and then from there, yeah. But, like, it's so crazy, the timing of it all, but I do believe that we all become friends in certain phases of your life for a reason. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm like, I don't know what I would do in New York City, especially at moving here Yeah. after a year without you guys. Okay. Cheers. 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 Cheers And like just to cheers ourselves too for like, I feel like it's really hard in your early 30s and late 20s for like a couple more years (laughs) to make girlfriends where you genuinely don't feel any competition. Oh my God. And don't feel like. You have to explain yourself and can like have a bad day. You don't have to impress anyone. You can just, you just roll yeah, up and you chill. Understand yes. each other on like a different level where yeah. you don't have to explain. You don't have to apologize. It's and you also like don't have this, to wonder about what it. they're doing yeah. behind your back. Yeah. That's always yeah. the thing that makes me so a lo- emotional. There's a lot of security in this room. Yeah. Yeah. That's for, that's, that's always something that makes beautiful. me so emotional because I'm, I'm value my friendships. I love my friendships and I take them so seriously. And people who don't or like can have a bunch of acquaintances, I'm just like, I don't understand. No. Don't do it. I'm like not gonna intimate cry. talk. I'm going to Are you gonna oh cry? My God. Just looking at Amanda's face and she was like the security and I was like, it's actually yeah. so beautiful. I like I obviously get in my head about so much shit, but like yeah. this is a beautiful this is I'm very grateful. Like yeah. you're lucky. Right. Yeah. Cause I also feel like 
any every single person has so many different like facets of their personalities like right. sometimes i'm a raging bitch or sometimes i'm like a want to cry yeah. in my bed and like have amanda rub my head like i mm-hmm. feel like there's so many different sides of our personalities and we've seen all of them we've seen all of them yeah, like we're all and like it's okay yeah. to be that yeah personality on any given day and even though like we are so similar we're so different from one another right. yeah. and we like we all have something that the other one is missing. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that's really We're a good beautiful. compliment to each but, other. But I mean, it's tough. I remember my first summer, I didn't fit in yeah. with the group of girls. And in the off season, like I remember constantly crying to Kyle being like, they're all hanging out without me. They're all getting together without me. Like yeah. I felt so left out. Even when I was with them, I felt like you didn't belong. No one wanted me there. Yeah. Like yeah. I just felt like I was a gnat. Like yeah. I was just there and like everyone was playing nice, but like no yeah. one actually wanted me around and it would only be like when Kyle was there or whatever it was. And it just, that feeling of like kind of always having to like show face and yeah. Yeah. like, no, it's like that's you're rushing a sorority. No, like, that's exhausting. You're going through rush yeah. and you're just smiling and you're like, I love it here. Like I'm so happy right. even though when you're, you're dying inside. Yeah. That's why we go to the bed because that's, that's when yeah. you can take, you can be yeah. like, okay, like my people face is off and I can like be by myself. And yeah. then like when everyone comes into whatever room we're in, like, you just feel yourself. Yeah, yeah that's we why we can it's like laugh at nice. shit. I also think our sense of humor is <laughs> very self-deprecating. Where like people just don't get it. But we're but also we, so dry. But we're so <laughs> dry. dry. We're, well, we're honestly people we're are European. so offended. <laughs> that's why they don't get us. Gets we're so cultured. We're European. We have a dry sense of humor. Kyle gets offended yeah. sometimes too. Yeah, it's like you're like you have a terrible sense of humor. I'm like you, you have just a don't terrible get sense it. of humor. Don't yeah, get literally, it. my favorite thing ever was people. Like from this past summer house season, my favorite thing is when Craig is literally drunk crying, <laughs> and I basically was like "fuck off," and everyone was like, "Paige is so, so mean." But you didn't even like, say oh that. My God, you wait, were like, "If you could have actually been in that moment." Okay, but can we talk about it? Because Craig was like, "I'm sad, but I'm not telling you what I'm sad about." Yeah. Like, no, but what is wrong? Like, there was stop rushing. Yeah. Eight the million rug. things he was sad about, and like happened to latch on to like missing his mom's birthday, which he didn't even miss. Like he you weren't. <laughs> being mean he was being annoying just was being just like being needy no. yeah. I was being they it. even pulled me so aside much. and was like am i being too much i was like yeah <laughs> yeah he's like i yeah. just don't i just want to talk about it we we're like i was like okay Paige, you just don't want to talk about it right now and you're like what is no, wrong with you he's I, like i just want the only person in the room to care and she doesn't care what's wrong no i loved watching it back so, so much but i loved that everyone got like the complete wrong impression of it because it actually reinforce like okay my experience of things that happen and then get convoluted to when people watch it like what people were saying to me as they were watching it was so opposite of that actual moment and i was in the actual moment so i know so it like reaffirmed to me like oh people can say the craziest untrue things about you and you can't let it get to you because i know in that moment Craig was being so dramatic and would cry literally about anything right then and there. And that I wasn't being mean yeah. to him and that he was But on the flip dramatic. side, Kyle woke me up and I screamed at him. And I was like, you're on my shit list. You're so fucking annoying. Like, you're so rude. This is awful. Yeah. And I had half the internet being like, this is marriage. Yeah. Just like, where <laughs> right. did that come yeah, from? Like, right. Yeah, like, like yeah. I was getting ready. I was ready to get like ripped yeah. apart. Yeah. Yes. And then meanwhile, I tell him like, I hate you. Like, I love you. But like most of the time I hate you. But like, you're annoying. And then well, the people are mad so about that. Relatable. Who actually likes their partner half the time? You just try to get through. <laughs> You're just trying to get through. Well, it just but goes it's to crazy show that. the things that people get upset about yeah. where yeah. we know like we're all or they're fine. just no, ready so to tell funny. our story as if they know us and i it mm, is just it's honestly comical because i'm like wow if you only really knew if, us if no, you only no, really also, knew us I call it fan fiction the fan yeah. fiction i read on the internet is, that so, is good. so like the stretch and the yeah. just the, the reach that people have for these Especially people stories. telling us that we're not even friends i yeah. love shit no like that. i love that. i love that I, I think it's my favorite. Yeah. And I actually enjoy reading things online that are so false because I feel like, okay, I'm doing a really good job of being on a TV show and also maintaining a private life. Because if you think like 
I hate Craig and Craig and I broke up. Like he's literally up my ass currently like, yeah, right like, at this exact moment I'm reading this. So yeah, like, like I, I feel like it's positive for me when I read things that are so false about myself because I'm like, oh, OK, I'm right. maintaining a private life at the same time. Yeah. And that's important to Did me. You always feel that way. Or is it because you're seasoned now and you've been doing this for years? I didn't always feel that way. No, mm. because I feel like being on a reality show, you get told like, you know, give everything be raw, like give all mm. of what's going on. Right, and yeah. although I feel like we do, there is a certain level of sanity where you're like, OK, well, I'm not going to tell America like I have a UTI today. Is that right. OK? Or yeah. do I have to give everything? But there's like, still like a level of editing which even if they told the story as like perfectly, perfectly. Mm -hmm. honest as they could if you're having a two-hour conversation with someone yeah. that they like water down. dwindle down mm -hmm. into like five let's say they give you five whole minutes which yeah. is a lot it's this still a not time. going to be the full story yeah. no so there's no version of like the full truth there's just their version so you have to give yourself grace and yeah. be like you know what i gave my all if this is how people perceive it like, yeah that they're not perceiving me who I really, who yeah. I really am. Yeah. They're, right. they're seeing a tiny bit of me. Yeah. And they're judging me based off of that. Right. And then their own assumptions of yeah. me. And, and like, you have to remind that's yourself. That's the character yeah. that they've created. Of it's me. five minutes that they've seen yeah. you. And and yeah. maintaining, maintaining privacy for me, you hit the nail on the head. I love my privacy. So sometimes like even filming the show, you run into a wall of like, like it's hard like how much do I want to expose of myself and how much do I want to keep to myself and how yeah. much do I want to give the world and like and they're still shitting on me so you know that's I why I that. feel like no but Kyle <laughs> puts everything out there yeah I don't have the option like of privacy right yeah but I just well I and I think that's why in this space it's so important to curate actual right. real friends. that's why like running to the bed yeah. and like be when yeah. I'm gonna give like a really right open myself up like I wanted to be with you guys yeah. and I wanted to be in the bed because that's yeah, where I feel safe where and safe. that's where I can be my full true self so that's why we are talking most of the time in, in the, the bed. bed and we're not going to bed never we're, up we're until always two in the morning up. do you remember that night that we solved so many issues of the world so many issues there was the one world. night over the summer I you know what and I didn't get shown but my grandma had gotten sick. I was leaving. It was like a Saturday night. I had to leave on that Monday to go look at hospice facilities for her. Yeah. And my aunt's calling me. My uncle's calling me. She's in the hospital. I, I had like just got into a tiff with my dad. My assistant fucked me over. You were having a lot of things. Happen. It was a lot of things happening all at once. Yeah. And it was right after that fucking campfire. Yeah. <sighs> Opened my results of my fertility shit mm -hmm. on camera. Yeah. Like. And all of that stuff just happening. I was like, and if I don't laugh out yeah. of the misery right now, I you will start to cry. And we cried. We laughed. Yeah. We were cracking jokes of just like the state that we're in right now and figuring out like, okay, who do we cut out of our life? Who needs to go? Who needs to stay? It was such a pure moment. It was moment. so pure. Yeah. And I knew we it was were... never going to see the light of day. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> This it was, was too authentic was too and, authentic. and like authentic. emotional yeah. and like a, it was a moment where like you get to another level of friendship yeah. with your friend and you yeah. don't realize it's happening until after where you're like oh my god we laughed and cried about that topic together and I was like that'll never make it yeah and it was <laughs> like the good shit it's, it's like, no one else shit. cares about it yeah that itself made it made everything sometimes that we go through so fucking worth it because I'm like this friendship right here and here and here I yeah. would trade for a million dollars maybe 10 <laughs> yeah right. I would, but i wouldn't trade it for anything in the world agreed we yeah. have to wrap up but i do want to leave with like this memory of on our very last day when we all wow, snuck wait. to each other and we were like let's go get in the bed one last time <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, uh, bags were packed cars were packed we <laughs> yes. were ready to go and we took a minute and to like just, the I four of us and we got in the bed like in the covers and we were we all laid. holding hands and we were just like i don't think we said anything no we just sighed but we, we just... were just like okay like one last time yeah. and i just feel like that is such like a symbol of like our strength and our security like you said like yeah who we are how we function as friends yeah a, a each literal other. security blanket no, no literally. literally yeah <laughs> like it's a, a weighted blanket that's such yeah. a sweet memory i'm gonna drag you bitches every summer at that, the end on the last day i think i did that memory. to you last summer when we shared a room yeah I've like, never had my lag. own room. Is that crazy? 
You either. want it that you way. You don't want to have your own. Yeah, yeah. You don't come on now. I, I, would, I, I haven't like either, but I would like to be with you guys, not. Yeah, well, you can. Kyle. What if us. Kyle rooms with another guy this summer, just to go just back give to old Kyle t- his college own time? Because that if he wakes me up again. He I can't swear because he get he gets fully <laughs> new in the nude and then gets in bed. <laughs> gets would we naked. pawn him off onto? <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. I don't want to. I wouldn't. I would give him right. Yeah. It would have to be one of us, and yeah. honestly, you got it. <laughs> you got it. Uh, it's me. <laughs> that one's mine. I'll take care of it. All right, guys. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. We love you guys. I love you guys. We love you. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Please rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you listen on. And we will see you next week.